Creating news in SharePoint is a lot like creating a page in SharePoint. You can start right from a team site's default homepage where we have this news web part. And notice if you have no news, there's a button to add news or right above that area, there's an add menu here where you can add a news post or a news link. Now, if you do have news, you won't see the button there. So don't get too heavily dependent on that, uh, but you will see this ad as long as you have permission to edit this site. So we could start here, or if you don't have a news web part on a page yet, you can always go to the new button at the very top, the same place that we've been adding lists and libraries and pages. And now we can add news post or news link. Let's start with news link because it's the simpler of the two. News link is going to be used whenever you have something external that you didn't create yourself that you want to post as news on your site. So for example, let's say you found a really cool blog out there like NateChamberlain.com and you wanted to post that as news on your site so other people could readily have access to it and go and check it out. So when you put a, a link in here, it goes out and tries to grab an image automatically. It puts a title in there for you and the description, which it's usually pulling from the most recent blog post, or maybe uh, if they have a description in their metadata for their site, it'll pull that. So you might want to make some changes. Mine might be natechamberlain.com um, M365 blog to be more specific. And then I might change my description to learn more about M365 and troubleshooting common issues and ideas and post. All right, so I didn't have to write original news, but now on my site, I've got a link to this external resource. And there we go. So going back here, just imagine if you add, you know, seven more pieces, eventually that's going to fall off of there, right? The most recent news we're usually going to see right here. And we'll talk about how to manage those settings later in this chapter. So uh, let's go ahead and add a news post as well. If we click on new and then news post this time, notice it looks just like when we created our page. Last time for the page, I used a blank template. This time I'm going to use this basic text template and create. All right, so my news, I'm going to call this uh, M365 training, oops, training opportunities. And this time I am going to leave the author at the top because for news, it feels a little bit more appropriate to say, this is the person who wrote this news. <laughs> uh, and then notice my template came with four text web parts and it's a two, two column layouts. So I can tell it's two sections because I've got the plus signs dividing the sections here. And then I can tell they're both two columns because well, there's two columns <laughs> in each section there. All right, so uh, for my M365 training opportunities, what I'm gonna do is add a section to the top and it's gonna be a one third right. And on the right hand side, I wanna list out those actual opportunities. So I'm gonna use an events web part. There we go. And then uh, let's come back to that in just a moment. And then over on the left hand side, I'm going to add a forms web part. There we go. And I don't have a form yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and create one here. So new form. I'm going to name this form um, M365 training, oops, training request so people can ask for a specific topic and create. All right, so it opened up a new tab for me. We're out at Microsoft Forms now. And if you haven't used this before, it's pretty easy, but it integrates really nicely with SharePoint and Teams. So I'm going to add a new question. And my question is basically just, what would you like to learn in M365? And then I'll add one more question with a date type and say, by when would you like this course to be offered? There we go. So I've got my two questions. I'm not really worried about who's submitting this because as long as I share it inside my organization, uh, I'm going to know who it is and what their email address is. So I don't have to ask those questions here as well. So with that, Keeping in mind, I'm only going to share it inside. I don't want to make this a public form because I'm not going to train everybody, right? <laughs> uh, so only people in my organization. I'm going to copy that URL and go back to my tab with my page. Now notice it already put my URL here, but I would want to copy that just like I did if you were adding a, an existing form. So remember when I added the, uh, the form web part, I could add new or existing. And existing, you want to paste that link I just copied. All right, so we are going to collect responses. I click OK. And there's my form. All right, so we're kind of just doing a, a demo here, right? So I'll just go ahead and leave the text web parts down there. And then I'm just going to change my header image to make it look more like a training kind of page. 
All right, and then uh, for my header web part, I'm also going to add text above the title to say October 2021. All right, so we're, we're pretty much done with our news so far. Now, the thing about the events web part, and the reason I haven't gone in here and added anything yet is because I actually can't yet. So it's a, it's a little bit strange. <laughs> uh, so if I post news, then there's nothing in my events web part, right? So I want to save this as a draft instead, and I'll, I'll post it later as news. So when I save as a draft, it's private to me, but it lets me add events. So I just need it to be out of edit mode, basically. So I click Add Event. And we'll call this SharePoint training. We'll choose the date here. All right, and we'll do this just a couple more times to get some events on there. All right, so I repeated that process and got a couple more events on there just for this demo. I've got a form that people can fill out right here on my page, and they can put in a date that they want to request and submit, and then down below those existing text web parts that came with my page. So I still haven't published yet, but now I'm ready. So I'm going to click on Post News in the upper right. So remember on a page it says Publish, on News it says Post News. All right, and now my news is posted. And the way that uh, news is treated a little bit differently than pages is that on any news web part, like the one that came with our site, of course it's going to post there, just like our news link did. But it's also going to roll up into the My News section of the SharePoint app bar for everybody on the left hand side. And sometimes it takes just a moment for things to show up because it's got to uh, go through the search index and eventually pop up for everybody. Uh, so if you don't see it right away, don't worry. So there we go. I just closed it and reopened it and now it's there. We got my blog and I'm still waiting on the training opportunities, but it'll pop in there. And then also it'll show up on the start page, remember? So when we first got started with SharePoint, we learned that this news at the very top shows us news from sites that we're a member of. So we've got that uh, blog news, and we're still waiting on the training opportunities news post. All right, so we've created news links, we've created news posts, and in the next lesson, we're gonna learn how to manipulate the news web part specifically, as well as a couple others, to pull in news from other sites and to get different layouts and such.